<laughs> scored against yourself. <laughs> it's like a real baby <laughs> bear on you then. <laughs> we went for realism. <laughs> interact with Microsoft Surface applications with their fingers, not mice and keyboards, creating a more visceral connection with the objects in the application. Consequently, users expect those objects to behave in the same ways that objects in the real world do, with properties like mass, inertia, friction, and collision. Additionally, Surface applications can incorporate and interact with real-world objects, further blurring the line between the real and the virtual. Believable physics, therefore, becomes a critical part of creating a good user experience in Surface applications. Surface applications are built with WPF and developed using the same tools as ordinary WPF applications, like Microsoft Visual Studio and Microsoft Expression. Identity Mine, a Microsoft Gold vendor, has created a series of enterprise-class WPF libraries to speed development, including Physics Panel, an extension of panel that adds physical properties and behaviors to ordinary WPF controls. With a few simple lines of markup and code, developers can create physics-enabled WPF applications without any knowledge of calculus, trigonometry, or classical mechanics. All the developer needs to do is create a physics panel, add WPF controls to it, and supply values for mass, gravity, and physical shape in attached properties. Physics Panel handles all the calculation, rendering, collision, inertia, and friction automatically. To demonstrate how to use Physics Panel, we'll walk through an air hockey game for Surface, created with Identity Mind physics libraries. The Surface display is 1024 by 768 display units in size. The air hockey game will use the entire display as a game board, with the outer perimeter as the walls. There will be two goals, one on either short end of the display, and a puck that will respond to interaction either from a finger or from ordinary air hockey paddles such as these. The paddles have felt bottoms to avoid scratching the surface display. There are three distinct types of interactions in this application. Hitting the puck with a paddle will create a collision, much like air hockey in the real world. Hitting a puck with a finger will create a similar collision interaction. Putting a finger down on the puck will grab the puck so it can be manually dragged, flicked, and moved around the game board. Let's take a look at some of the markup used to create this application. We use the IME namespace for Identity Mind Enterprise Libraries and the IMT namespace for Identity Mind Surface Libraries. Note that Physics Panel is a physics enabled WPF panel, while Table Physics Panel is an extension of Physics Panel for Surface. So some controls and properties may be in the IME namespace, while others are in the IMT namespace. The parent of all physics-enabled controls is an IMT table physics panel, which behaves much like an ordinary canvas, except for the physics interactions it supports on its children. Inside the table physics panel declaration, there is an attached property, IME physics panel dot world. This attached property defines the geometry and global gravity in the physics panel. We have defined the bounds property as 1,044 units wide, 788 units tall, and 100 units deep. We added 20 extra units on the top, bottom, and sides to allow for the width and height of the goals and walls. The physics panel is 100 units deep to allow for a little play in Z space. Though air hockey is a mostly two-dimensional experience, physics panel supports three-dimensional physics. The game will be restricted to a very small area of z-space, but will still have a little play along the z-axis for added realism. The gravity property in physicspanel.world allows you to set gravity as a force along one or more axes. We have defined gravity as a force in the amount of negative 1,000 units on the z-axis, pulling the puck down toward the table. Inside the IME physicspanel.world is the IME PP bounds collection, which is a collection of IME PP bounding objects. 
physics panel allows the developer to define a three-dimensional area within their physics world called a bound, which is given special treatment. When any physics-enabled object enters or leaves a bound, physics panel raises an event with the information about the object, what bound was crossed, whether the object entered the bound or exited it, and exactly where the bound was crossed. The only bound declared in this application is a world bound. If the puck leaves the world bound, that is, if a player knocks the puck off the game board, the application will respawn it back in play. Now that we have a physics world with geometry, gravity, and a defined world bound, we will create our first physics-enabled WPF control inside the table physics panel, a rectangle. By adding an IME physics panel dot physics body attached property to the rectangle, we attach a virtual physical body to the rectangle to allow physics panel to control its rendering. Let's examine the physics body declaration to understand how that works. The IME physics body has two properties, position and mass. This tells physics panel where to initially create this object and how much mass to give it. This object will be the top wall of the air hockey game, so we set the position to 0 on the x-axis, 290 on the y-axis, and 19,999 on the z-axis. This will place the wall right up against the top edge of the game board at a tremendously high height on the z-axis because the wall will be very tall to prevent the puck from getting out of bounds easily. By setting the mass property of this physics body to zero, physics panel will treat it as an immovable object. Any object that collides with this wall, no matter how massive or fast moving, will bounce off the wall and the wall will remain in its initial position. Now that we have the initial position and mass of the physics body, we need to determine its shape and size. Inside the physics body declaration, we declare the IME physics body dot shape. The shape of this wall is a three-dimensional primitive called an IME WPF box shape. We set the length, width, and depth of the box shape in its size property. These values will create a very tall, fairly thick wall that will run along the entire top of the game board. That's all there is to creating a physics-enabled WPF control in physics panel. We will repeat this process for all of the remaining walls on the game board until we have a shape like this. Now with the entire game board defined, we move on to creating the puck. We could declare the puck in markup much the same way as we declared the walls, except that we want to create the puck dynamically. This code shows how to attach physics body properties to controls created at runtime. In this case, we attach a physics body property to a WPF image control. Again, with physics panel, any control can become physics enabled with just a few easy steps. First, we create a physics body. We set its picking type to picking behavior dot mirror interaction, which means when a user puts a finger down on this physics body, the physics body should follow that user's finger wherever it goes, like a traditional drag and drop interaction. We set its initial is dragging value to false, set its mass to 100, set its mass center to a new vector three, which can be thought of as a three dimensional point, and set its initial position to 512, negative 384, 90, which is in the middle of the game board, 90 units above the floor, so it will drop into play. We then define the shape of the physics body as a new WPF cylinder shape with a size of 33 units in each direction. Then we combine the physics body and WPF cylinder shape with the static physics panel dot set physics body method. We then register the framework element with the contact manager, which we will get into in more detail later, and add it to the physics panel with the physics panel's add to method. This will add the image to the physics panel with a cylinder shaped physics body attached to it, defining its physical interactions. At this point, we can quite happily pick the puck with our finger and flick it all over the table, watching it collide with our walls. We're almost finished with our game and we've barely even broken a sweat yet.